This month's spread is a positive page using colours that are calm but fresh. I feel happy when I'm playing with paint and paper and I'd like to invite you along with me. I'll be drawing and painting this plant today and doing a little bit of writing and as usual it will be easy, we'll go through it all step by step. I'm using a mix of pens for colouring including these real brush pens from Arteza. I'll put links to the supplies in the description box down below. I'll start by drawing the pot and these leaves and we're going to layer the colour to make it feel 3D. I'm using brush pens here to shade on the pot and twy markers on the leaves to make them feel really succulent. And if playing with paint and journaling spreads are things that make you feel happy, then hit the subscribe button and ring that notification bell because I've lots more videos and creative ideas to come. The twy markers are double-ended pens and mine came in this box of 48. The pigment in them is very strong and I tend to dab them on a plate and use them with a brush and that gives me a lot of control. I used them when I painted that little red mushroom in a journaling spread and memory collage that I did a few weeks ago. I like the mix and range of colours because there's always two or three that go together in a palette that I can blend and that's what I want to do today. I have some cold press watercolour paper, it's relatively thick, 140 pounds or 300 GSM and I'm really looking forward to injecting colour on the page today using some of my spotty papers in fresh spring greens. I'm going to use a pocket on the right hand side here and that will balance the spread and of course we're going to do some journaling and just put some text on the page. I start by drawing the pot and for this I'm using an Inconic pen in a suitable shade of terracotta and my tip for this start of the process is to think about proportion of the pot on your little piece of paper compared to the space that you're leaving on the upper half so that you have plenty of space for the leaves and probably for a little bit of sky or background beyond that. And having drawn a really simple pot there I'm moving on to draw the leaves so there is no pencil on the page, I'm not copying or following any lines, I'm just making a few sweeping lines with that pen creating to begin with six leaves at the front some tucking behind each other and they're just a little pointy leaf you can vary the size tuck a few in behind there at the base so I put six leaves down and then I put another four behind so it's a little bit similar to the zebra cactus that I drew and painted in a journal spread last year I'll leave a link to that video in the description box down below and now that we have our pot and our leaves we can have some fun with the painting because I'm using real brush pens I need to put some water on the paper and this is really important for helping the pigment to blend so I'm just taking my little pot of clean water and adding some both to the base of that pot and then separately to the lid that we drew and here I am taking the brush and flicking it from the outside in and what this seems to achieve is some more depth of colour on the edges of the pot and a little bit more of a light touch in the middle and it's this that gives us the sense of roundness to the pot and maybe a space where you think the light might be catching it. You can of course use your watercolour paints for this and I think it would be good fun to do it with watercolour pencils as well because they would be great to blend. I'm using the same shade of green pen to add just a few horizontal lines along each of the leaves they're quite dainty, quite light as you can see here. What we're really starting is building up some layers so you will see some of those lines as we cover them up with other colours of green and blend and some of them will merge and it's this little process that I find is a lot of fun but it gives it depth and succulence to those leaves, it makes it feel really alive. And it's time to use a twy marker, I'm going in with the shade chartreuse green and it really is that bright yellowy green very vibrant and very fresh and here with a relatively water-laden brush I'm taking that colour down the centre of the leaves 
I'm not worrying too much about whether I am going to the edge of the leaves and in fact I want the colour to pick up more intensely down the middle and this is going to make those leaves feel just a little bit more rounded using the same principle as the shading on the pot. So just a light wash of colour on each of these leaves in a very pale shade of yellowy green. I'm choosing one of my real brush pens in a medium shade of green and I'm just putting a little bit of the colour onto that palette so that I can use my brush pen to get some definition to the leaves. So we have chartreuse, the bright yellowy green in the middle of the leaf and I'm now adding with some precision a little bit of definition to the edges of the leaves. So at this point we really are starting to add some of that roundness to the leaf shape. And to build up more of that shape I'm also going direct to paper. So I'm using the tip of the real brush pen quite delicately to edge around some of those leaves and it's at this point that I, I think I start to see some of that depth in the plant that's in the pot. I really love playing with my, my pens and my paints and my paper and just having a go at little images like this. What do you like painting and drawing and colouring? Is there any particular image that you find particularly satisfying or relaxing to create? Let me know in a comment down below. I'm using ink from another of the real brush pens and this time it's in a slightly darker shade of green here and I'm using that again around the edges of the leaf. So we're just building up colour I'm just building up some of the shape to the leaves. The paper is still relatively damp. Remember we added water on both the pot and the leaves at the beginning and it's this that really helps the colour to blend. I'm even adding a little bit directly from the brush pen to my water brush where I feel like I need a little bit more strength of colour. When I'm painting a little picture like this I find it incredibly easy to forget about the world and sitting at my craft desk in my craft room upstairs it's a very peaceful place. I get my hot drink, I put my candle on, the room smells fantastic and at the end of it I get a cute little picture, I feel good and feel positive and I felt like just sharing some of that with you today. When you sit at your craft desk and you're having a go at something new or creating a junk journal or painting a little picture, how does that make you feel? Do you feel calm and relaxed and good when you've finished your little project? I'm adding a few little extra ridges to those leaves and this time it's with a slightly darker shade of green, again in an inconic pen. And you can see on the pot that just underneath the rim I've added some darker brown and a bit of shading, a bit of grungy dirt on the pot just to make it a bit more real. I've kept the paper quite damp and that does make the definition that we added earlier dissipate a little bit, it can blend very easily. So I'm going back in with a little bit of darker green again from a real brush pen and just adding a little bit more to the edges. And because I don't want the pot to dangle in mid-air I'm playing now with a few of the different shades that we've already used in the image, picking out some greens, some browns and going back in even with that chartreuse green. And I find that if I use the same colours as the ones that are used in the pot and the leaves, it all seems to just come together, something seems quite right. When I stamp and paint on book pages, which I really love to do, I still like to anchor the image in some form of grass or base. There's an example of one I did in a spread about a year ago. I'm back to the twine marker pens here using the shade Cerulean Blue and it really is quite a, a pale blue, perhaps a little bit more vibrant than you'd expect. What I'm going to do is take a fair bit of water, first adding that to the paper again so we're keeping it damp and then going in with my brush pen and starting with the top of our little piece of paper just adding the most delicate amount of blue and you can see that it it adds a little bit of context to the image just a little bit of something and some depth I'm not really creating clouds it's just some background and this is the focal point done for our spread this month I've rounded the two corners at the top here on the right and on the left and I'm going to affix it to the page on the left hand side with some really strong glue. So 
On this occasion I'm using my Pritt stick and I'm going to affix that to the upper half of the page on the left hand side. I'm being quite careful not to press my fingers on the image. I've let it dry a little bit but the paper is still a little damp. These are some of the extra pieces that I want to add today. I've been having a lot of fun playing with mica powders and metallics and I'm going to mix that little image with some scrapbook paper with script on and this little pocket. I've added some washi to the pocket here in some nice fresh green, some complementary colours and I'm going to also tear a couple of pages from these gorgeous spotty sheets of scrapbook paper. I can't believe how well they go with the, the colour of that terracotta in the pot. I pulled out pages that I thought would work but I'm really pleased with how these go together and how fresh and vibrant they feel. I've been having fun recently using up all my little bits of scrap paper, my book pages, making these little collage cards so if you do enjoy making little projects like that then check out my video I will leave a link in the description box down below they're a lot of fun. I've hand torn just a strip of that lovely dotty terracotta paper it's just peeping out from the right hand side overlapping the edge and on top of that I thought I'd use this larger dotty paper it seems to go with the fresh greens in the leaves of the plant and there is something just very smiley, very happy about dots on a page. Does that make sense? Let me know what you think. I want to add a border but I want to do something a bit different from some of these that I've done on my other monthly spreads. I could use washi, I could tear a strip of scrapbook paper. I'm going to start by adding the long dash and a dot just to add some definition to our image and then I think I'll add something relatively simple today to just bring the page together with a very light touch. This month's journal spread is about being positive. I recognise that we're living through some really challenging times. I've added a hashtag that I really like. I've seen that around social media recently and I'm just pulling out a stencil that I haven't yet used. I'm going to use that on the right hand side just to make a few of my journaling points to add some emphasis. I'm picking a size of circle that will sit nicely with some of the other patterns in the paper on the right hand side and I'm thinking about where to position them so that I have enough space to write but as usual I won't necessarily write just horizontally. I like to mix it up. You might have seen that in one of my journaling spreads last time. This was a stencil that I saw in Hobbycraft. I bought it about a year ago and yes I do need to use it. It cost about a pound I think from memory. So I'm just colouring in those little circles with my black pen and then I'm going to write, put on the page, some of the things I think when I'm going on my walks with the dog and this is probably my most positive time of the day. I'm going to grab three things that I feel make me feel good and hopefully share that with you as we go through this period of change. So my first point is about that state of happy surprise that you feel when you go for a walk outside and you see a change in your environment, maybe a change in the flora and fauna around you. And for me that was this little walk in the woods, definitely a change, little snowdrops suddenly peeping through the ground, daffodils that weren't there the day before, how does that happen, and fresh buds of leaves on the trees. Definitely different, I think even the air smelt different. So I'm capturing that, yes it's a change, but isn't it good? I'm changing my colour of pen for the second journaling point and I'm writing about what I see on those walks as I take the dog for a walk when I look at people's smiling faces. Is it true that a new month and a new season can make people feel smiley and happy? I think it can. I think it's the change that we see, the fresh air that we breathe in and that change in our natural environment that just makes us want to lift our heads, look up and smile and I'm just capturing a point around that on the page. My third point here is more about how I respond to what can be a pretty scary time at the moment and something I've learnt from 
other phases in my life are to some extent it's about how we respond maybe how we help each other being kind so although change can be really quite scary maybe I can help myself by thinking about how I respond and through that process creating a better place doing some good journaling in a book doesn't give us the answers and I definitely don't know them all but I feel like it gives us a moment to think and maybe by that we come up with something happier and better let me know what you think does that make any sense leave me a comment in the box down below I'm pulling the page together with a single line so a wiggly border something delicate that I I want to use not too heavy this time it goes with the light-hearted feel the positive theme in the spread so I'm quite happy with that and the colors on the page it's time to add the pocket so although that's going to cover up some of the words sticking it on with my Pritt stick I, I don't mind that it's the process of putting script on a page that really makes me feel good so I'm going to add some pieces up here that yes will cover the words I've been playing with metallic paints and mica powders you can see the shimmer on these three dresses so hit the subscribe button if you want to see me play with some of those in a journaling spread that tucks nicely in the pocket alongside this beautiful piece of ephemera I love the writing on this and this is my March journal spread if you've enjoyed this painting process then check out my January spread where we had a lot of fun painting and playing with scrapbook paper. I hope to see you soon.